Alright, lights, check, camera, check, pasty white knees, on point. Let's get started. Right then, so Lenovo's new Legion 5 series laptops are a slight refresh and rebrand of the Y series, and I think they did another great job with this one. It's still one of, if not the least gamery looking laptops on the market. In fact, now that they've replaced the backlit Legion logo with this cool looking but still super muted iridescent logo, in my opinion, it doesn't look gamery at all. Now on their Y series laptops, specifically the Y540, they had this swirly texture on the lid, but now it's totally smooth in phantom black. Uh, it'll still show fingerprints, but not nearly as bad as other matte black laptops like the ones we get from Razer, for example. Those things are goddamn nightmare to keep clean. It is an all plastic build, but it feels surprisingly solid. I don't know if they're using different plastics, maybe they're just thicker plastic, or maybe it's just my imagination, but it feels like a vault. My only stupid little gripe is the color of the hinge, because it's got this subtle blue hue to it when the light hits it at certain angles. Not even sure if it'll show up on camera properly, but I just found it kind of weird and out of place. The lid is a one-handed opener. You just gotta open it slowly, otherwise the bottom will lift up a bit. Now the display is a 15-inch 1080p IPS LCD with 144 hertz refresh rate, and it looks great. Good color gamut coverage and good max brightness with my tests actually showing higher than what it was rated on the product page. Uh, content looks great, games look great, and there's a new privacy guard for the webcam that's been relocated to the top, which is a sweet new addition. Uh, there's four display options you can choose from if you wanted something different. We've got 120 hertz option, but its brightness maxes out at only 250 nits. There's a 60 hertz option with a max of 300 nits, the 144 hertz option I have in the model I was sent, and a 240 hertz option with a max of 500 nits. Personally, I'd go for either the 144 or 240 hertz options. Uh, we've got a full keyboard, it's got a good layout, good key size, and the font looks normal. <laughs> the travel distance is still short, but not nearly as short as a ton of other laptops I've reviewed, and it is a little soft to type on, but not too soft, if, if that makes sense. Now, the backlighting was a bit of a letdown to me because it's just a white backlight with only two brightness steps. There is a four zone RGB option you can pick, but I mean, I feel like these days it should have come standard. Uh, the deck itself has this really unique feel to it. It's not soft touch, that's for sure, but it's also not straight up plasticky feeling. I actually really like it and it's easier to clean. The ClickStyle trackpad's pretty decent. It's a good size, not too big, not too small. It's got a plastic surface, not glass, but it's really smooth, so finger glide's been okay. Not as good as glass surfaces, but it's still good. Click travel's nice and short with a crisp actuation, making it feel a little more high end and it's running everyone's favorite, Windows drivers. Uh, in the Lenovo Vantage app, there's a whole bunch of settings for you to change, but there's three thermal modes to choose from, quiet, balanced, and performance, that you can quick toggle between using the function and Q keys, which also changes the color of the power button LED depending on the mode you're in, which is pretty nifty. Uh, here's the thing though, uh, as far as I can tell, those modes aren't affecting the speeds of the fans, they're affecting the CPU's clock speeds, which in turn affects the speeds of the fans. So in quiet mode, it basically just throttles the hell out of the CPU. And then I think the balance and performance modes are the exact same thing as Windows own balance and high performance modes. So there's a bunch of different configs for this guy depending on where you look. Uh, the model I have is currently on sale at B&H Photo for 1300 bucks. And that's the funny thing about Lenovo's laptops. They go on sale like a month after they launch. Sometimes it's on Lenovo's own website and sometimes it's through their retail partners. But the point is when they do go on sale, it's usually a stupid good value. Now what else is a good value? Raid Shadow Legends. I'm just joking, it's Surfshark. Surfshark VPN. <laughs> Browser ad blockers block ads, but provide literally no other protection. And that's where Surfshark VPN comes in. With Surfshark, you're totally protected from all those shady nerds trying to yoink your banking credentials and social media accounts by encrypting all your back and forth data, as well as blocking ads on your computer and phone. But beyond that, let's say you want to watch some content that's geo-restricted in a certain region. Yeah, no worries. No matter where you are in the world, you can access your social media or different regions' video content libraries like from Netflix or Hulu. So if I wanted to watch the UK's Netflix library, no problem. And even if your partner back home's using Surfshark to do whatever, Surfshark's the only VPN service that allows for an unlimited number of simultaneous connections across every major platform, which is perfect for families. Give Surfshark a try now by clicking the link in the description and use my promo code Jared for 83% off your subscription and an extra month free. Anyways, at idle, even in quiet mode, the fans always seem to be running. They're super quiet, but there is a bit of a subtle hum. And when I drop the system load hammer on this guy with the fans running at max, 
They were actually quieter than I was expecting and way quieter than a lot of other gaming laptops. And while sweating it out, Thermal seemed to be doing okay with a CPU keeping an average under 90 degrees Celsius at 3.4 gigahertz, although that's achieved by both thermal and power limit throttling, so I'm not blown away with those results or anything. Gaming performance, on the other hand, was decent. Uh, the Intel i7 10750H and RTX 2060 non-max Q variant, which gives us a bit more power, played really nice together. In low settings, it maintained triple digits in most games, and again, the temps were looking pretty good, so I'm happy with those results. Taking off the bottom panel, we've got the two fans with some chunky heat pipes, and it looks like it's all pretty easy to remove if you want to do some repasting. Uh, there's a couple of easy access RAM slots, the SSD, Wi-Fi card, and a two and a half inch drive cage, but if you look a little closer, you'll notice an additional M.2 slot for another SSD. You just gotta pull that drive cage out of there first. The battery is fairly small at only 60 watt hours. It only lasted me just under three hours in balanced mode at 80% brightness. The bottom firing speakers are pretty small and so is the sound they produce. They're pretty underwhelming. I was really happy to see that most of the ports are still on the back. We've got four USB-A ports, a single USB-C, HDMI, network, and an audio combo jack. So plenty of holes for you to stick things in and pull things out of. So there it is, that's the Legion 5i. I'm really digging the new small but noticeable design changes and all the custom configuration options you get on the Legion site. It's a sweet laptop if you can find it on sale. Well, especially if you can find it on sale, which like I said, is all the time. <laughs> Anyways, I think that does it for this one. I hope you liked the video. If you did, maybe show me some love with that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, but thanks as always for watching and I'll talk to y'all in the next one. Cheers.